Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. To the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom Wahab Labaki Yashar Yasharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baharukha Chodash Shah Amaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And um, the title of this lesson is going to be something along the lines of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is our crutch. He is our support. I was watching this video. Um, the channel is called Full Spectrum Survival. It's a channel pretty much going in on the different um, problems that America face here in 2021. As far as uh, the economy free falling, okay, um, hyperinflation um, that's going to soon take place to the U.S. currency, okay, the millions uh, of people that's being fired and left without a job and any way to support themselves, okay, uh, it, it's a it's a um, nice channel to follow to keep you updated on the state the 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 state what they're not telling you. OK, the state of um, this economy, the state of the dollar, the state of this country. OK, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, millions, even really millions of people in America that cannot pay their mortgage. OK. All, all this place is falling. OK, it's crumbling and you cannot heal this place. All right. The different food shortages. All right. The Lord is smiting this place. He's, he's incrementally breaking it down. And as he breaks it down, we are going to trust in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Just like in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, when he was breaking that place down, the Lord was there feeding us. The Lord was there taking care of us. The Lord, he was there. Modern day Egypt, he's he, being America, he's going to show his power even more. It says that in the book of Jeremiah, shall no longer be said. The Lord that delivered them out of Egypt, but the Lord that delivered them out of the north, all right, being North America. Okay, this deliverance is going to be great. This deliverance is going to be glorious, even more great and even more glorious than the deliverance of ancient Egypt. All right, that's what we trust in. So I want to play a little bit of this video and then hop into the scriptures. I'm going to just play it off my other phone. It's not worth pulling up. Uh, if you want to, Lord as well, I'll put the link in the description box so you can check out the whole video and find this uh, this page that I'm speaking of. Don't or the children of your family. Things get tough. Get through something. You need to develop a crutch, and that crutch will help you get through this crisis. That crutch could be a skill set that you can sell as a side gig or for a little bit of money on the side. That crutch could be an entertainment that you have for your family because things are going to get tough. They're going to get very rough soon. And so you're going to need that crutch to get through it. A couple of crutches that I would think of investing. So the, trust, the crutch that we're going to need that's going to get us through this crisis is Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And there's really no other way to get through this crisis. All right, because this crisis is all leading to even worse crisis being um, nuclear war. And in that nuclear war, this country is going to be obliterated according to the prophecy that's written in the Bible. The same Bible that Joe Biden swore, put his dirty claws on, man, his dirty red hands on. And uh, uh, made an oath upon what you're not supposed to do. And then the next day, what did he do? Sign all type of executive orders uh, um, that are contrary to the laws of the Bible. Okay, so the Lord is going to bring this place down. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. And we're approaching the bounds of Esau, Edom that he cannot pass. All right, that's why he's going to come down having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. All right, his time is short. And when he comes down having great wrath, again, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is going to be our crutch. In the book of Isaiah, it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's what we are going to trust in. All right. 
The Lord said, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. So we're going to pray to Yahweh that we keep uh, the word of his patience so that he can keep us from the hour of temptation. The scripture says, strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for us. The Lord is going to fight for us. We are going to wait for him. Okay. That's who we are going to trust in. That's who that's who's going to be our crutch, who's going to be our support. Okay? Because why? Nobody that's trusted in the Lord was conf was confounded. Nobody that's abided in the fear of the Lord was forsaken. Nobody that's called upon his name was despised. His name is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's what's going to keep us safe through this crisis. Not any of these things that this man made or, or that this that this man named. OK, what's going to get us through all the different plagues that's going to come upon this place is trusting in Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. So let's hop into the scriptures. That's all I'll play on that video. <clears throat> the, um, the picture or the depiction that you see on your screen is the picture of Yahweh Shai in the green garment with the, uh, with the girdle and, and, and with the gold on. You know, he's he's uh, the artist put him in his uh, uh, glory, uh, his, his kingly apparel, I should say. Right. And then the man that he's helping up uh, uh, is a depiction of the head apostle Peter, the head disciple Peter. All right. Now, I'm just going to read the account. We're going to hop right into it. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 14 and verse 21. It says, um, Salaki, I'll start at verse 22, Matthew chapter 14 and 22. And straightway Yahweh Shai constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to, to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So it was, it was rocky rivers, all right? It, it was rocky rivers out there. And you got to imagine that uh, he, the disciples left way before him, all right? The, the, the disciples left way before him. So they have to be deep into the sea, all right? They have to be deep into that, into whatever body of water they were in, okay? He had to send the, uh, uh, send the multitudes away. Then he departed into a mountain. It takes time to get, get there, right? And he prayed. And then by the time he got back, he was alone. They was already deep. They was already on their way. Okay, so let's continue on. It says, uh, but the ship was now tossed in the midst of the, this is verse 24, but the ship was now tossed in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahweh Shai went unto them, walking on the sea, walking on the water. First of all, like I was mentioning, he ha they had to be deep out there. So how did he catch up so quickly? A hey, Yahweh Shai is cold, man. And, and the Lord said, the Lord said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do, but even greater. All right. So, hey, Lord's will, we going to be doing certain things like this, man. All right. Whatever is needful. The Lord said, I'll give every needful thing in due season. So the Lord may need us to heal somebody. All right. And then convert multitudes of people. These were things that, are, that were happening in Acts. And in the book of Acts, the first chapter, the Lord said, You will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Samaria and in Judea and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we read about the accounts in the book of Acts when they were being witnesses unto uh, 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 the Lord in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, the different acts that they were doing. Hence, that's why it's called the book of the Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Disciples. All right. And unto the uttermost part of the earth on the other side of the world. They're in the Middle East at that time, right? So the uttermost part of the earth, the other side of the world would be what? Over here in the Western Hemisphere. Here in Babylon. The Lord is going to lift up that standard one way or another. We can't put the Lord in a box. We can do all things through him that strengthen us. All right? And here's a prime example. Uh, uh, at that time, Yahweh Shai was in a mortal body. Right? And he was able to do that. Peter. Well, Salaki, let me not jump the gun. Let's continue. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 14 and verse 25. It says, In the fourth watch of the night, Yahweh Shai went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. So they was even scared. Like, they didn't know what they was looking at. It's not something you see every day. All right? So the Lord is special. Yahweh Shai is special. And he's to be reverenced. 
right? He's the, the first spirit that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, created. And then the Lord used him to create everything else, okay? He is to be reverenced according to the scriptures. It says that he's the mediator between the Most High, Yahweh, and men. He's the go-between. So a group that's saying you don't have to worship Yahweh Shai, then how get the hell away from that group. It says, but straightway Yahweh Shai spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come on to bid me come unto thee on the water. And so Peter is like, if that's you, let me come to you. What does the Lord respond with? Verse 29. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down onto, come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahweh Shai. All right. So as we get closer and closer to the return of Yahweh Shai, we're going to, the Lord's going to do miracles. I'll leave it at that. All right. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Okay, so at first he was walking. He was actually walking. This is real, right? Peter was walking on the water towards Yahweh Shai at nighttime, all right? Mind you, the, the, the wind was contrary. So then he seen the wind being boisterous, right? Probably a big old wave coming towards them. And he began, and he got afraid and he feared, Right? So let's continue verse 31. So that can be symbolic for what? The different hell that's coming to this place. Um, the flesh naturally gets flustered or the, the flesh naturally uh, gets fearful. I'll I, I just say it like that. The flesh will naturally get fearful. A prime example is what we're reading. Peter was able to walk on the water. He was walking towards the Yahweh Shai. But then when he seen that uh, the the way the winds was boisterous and the waves was boisterous, what the flesh naturally began to fear, just like when Yahweh Shai was going uh, on the cross. The flesh didn't want to do that. The flesh wanted to find a way out. All right, the flesh is going is going to get uh, flustered, but that's when the spirit has to kick in. Okay, that's where faith comes in. Faith is how we're going to conquer the flesh. The spirit is how we're going to conquer the spirit. But we have to continue to feed the spirit more and more and more every single day and starve out the flesh more and more and more every single day. So that what? So that our spirit will be stronger than our flesh. And when our flesh has these different desires and different emotions, the spirit is able to come and guide. All right. And prevail. Okay, so let's continue to read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 14, and verse 28. And Peter uh, answered him and said, Lord, if thou, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Yahweh Shai Mashiach. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, save me. And immediately Yahweh Shai stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him. So he, so he was, he, he started doubting. He started to get fearful when he seen the uh, uh, boisterous wind and the boisterous waves, right? But he still had faith because he knew the Lord was going to save him, right? And that's what we're going to do. That's going to be our clutch or, or our crutch, all right? In any situation that we find our, ourselves in, and no matter how bad it looks, no matter how boisterous the winds get, no matter how boisterous the waves get, right? We're going to cry to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And he is immediately, right? He is going to stretch forth his hand and catch us and get us and get us out of that situation. Okay? So let's read it again. It's the book of Matthew 14 and 31. And immediately Yahweh Shai stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So we cannot doubt. All right, without faith, it's impossible to please Yahweh. He that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, the Lord, the, the Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and that have faith. Without faith, we can't please him. All right, so we got to pray that the Lord help our unbelief, the doubt, all right, the different thoughts, all right. 
or 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 or, or, or the flesh. The flesh is instantly. The flesh is carnal. The, the flesh is enmity with the Most High. It's on the contrary with the Most High. All right. So it's going to do the opposite. All right. It's, it's scriptures say that the uh, heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. This flesh is desperately wicked. All right. It's going to try to send you off. All right. But that faith has to kick kick in. The spirit has to kick in. All right. Okay, so it says Matthew 14 and 31. It says, And immediately I was shall stretch forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. It was really just a test. Alright? It was really just a test. Because as soon as they got into the ship, there was no more winds. The Lord controls the winds. There's another account when Yahweh Shai was in the bottom of the ship and the disciples, uh, and he was down there sleeping, and the disciples were um, uh, on, on top of the deck, right? And the winds were boisterous, all right? Similar, similar situation. And then they ran downstairs. They woke up the Lord. Say, we're about to perish. We're about to die, roughly paraphrasing the story. And then he rebuked the winds. And they said, what manner of man is this? So the Lord is in control over everything, man. Uh, scriptures talk about uh, the knowledge of his omnipotency. Right, this is the book of um, Sirach, chapter 18. There's Sirach, yeah. Sirach, chapter 19 and verse... Let's start at 20. It says, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And in the knowledge of his omnipotency. All right, he's all powerful. All right, he's in control over everything, every situation. A sparrow, a bird doesn't even fall out of the sky unless the Lord ordains it. All right, so everything that happens on the earth, the Lord is in full control over. What do we have to fear? The scriptures say that fearfulness, uh, fearfulness has surprised the hypocrite. All right, the sinner, the sinners in Zion are afraid. All right, let's get that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33 and 14, it says, The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. So hey, if we abide in Yahweh Shai Mashiach in truth and in sincerity and is trying to do everything that we can to serve him and please him to the best of our ability, then that, that means we abide in him. And in Yahweh Shai, there is no sin. The sinners in Zion are afraid. So this is talking about the wicked of Zion, the ones that refuse to return uh, to, to return to the Lord, to repent from their sins. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning. So what was that dude talking about? Yeah, get you a crutch, maybe a little side hustle, which is not bad to have a side hustle. OK, but if that's all you're depending on, you're in for a rude awakening. Get you a little crutch, he said. Right. Some games, because it's going to get real, real tough. Some games, man, really. All right. The crutch that's going to get that, that 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 can get you through all these different things that's going to happen is Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, because he's the ones that's that, that's bringing all these different things, man. This is the Heavenly Father that's doing this in the name of his only begotten son. That's bringing these plays. The Lord has sent the plays. Who can he, who can send them back? As it says in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. The scriptures say, shall it be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? In the book of Amos. All right. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah it says that the Lord killeth and he maketh alive. He does good and he does evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Lord is the one that's bringing the, bringing the plagues. The only way you can escape it is by getting in good with the one that's bringing it. That's bringing this damage. That's bringing this judgment. So we're going to continue to serve Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Adawan Ratazah, Lord willing. We're going to trust in him. Whenever we get low, whenever shit gets rocky, and then waves get boisterous and then winds get boisterous, we're going to trust in the Lord who is our rock, all right? Who is our shield and our buckler. Let's get some of them precepts. This is the book of Psalms. Salakia. Is the book of Psalms, chapter um, 27 and verse 9. It says, Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in thine anger. Thou hast been my help. He's our help. He is our support. He is our crutch. Leave me not 
Neither forsake me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Power of my salvation. Okay? So the Lord is our help. He is our salvation. He is our crutch, our support that's going to get us through these crises. Or that's going to get us through this crisis. That's going to get us through the hell that's coming upon this world. He is going to shelter us in the book of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, the fourth verse. It says, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. All right. And we're sighing and crying for these for these different abominations, for the innumerable abominations that take place in this vile ass society. All right. So, Lord willing, we got that mark. That word mark in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word the wah, which means to be exempt from judgment. The next verse says, as for the others, this is the Lord speaking to an angel that's going to bring, that's going to help and aid bring forth his judgment, man. All right. On this earth. He said, as for the others, smite, let not your eyes spare. Show no pity. As for them that have, as for the men that have the mark. Or no, he says, come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Roughly paraphrasing, come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Okay? So they're going to have that red light when it comes to us. But everybody else, green light, let not your eyes spare. Neither show any pity. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 30 and verse 10. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, be thou my helper. Be thou my crutch. All right, just tying it in with the um with the topic with the title, he said the dude on the um video he he's right you you do need to get a crutch you do need to go get a support, all right. But the different options he gave you was not the right uh, answer. The right answer and the only answer is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Since I'm in Isaiah. Let's read the thirty. Uh, let's read the six verses. Isaiah thirty-three and six. And wisdom and knowledge shall wisdom and knowledge of what? Of these scriptures, wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. Shall be the stability of thy time. Shall keep you stable. And the scriptures in the book of uh, Hebrews, I believe, or is it Romans? All right. The Lord said that. Uh, the, the the Lord said what? Um. Or the scriptures say uh, that 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 this faith is an anchor. All right. This faith is an anchor for our soul. This is what's going to hold us down. This is what's going to keep us stable in these times that's to come. This is going to be our crutch. Right. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is his treasure. This is our treasure. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 26 and verse I start at one. It says, In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai appoint for the walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, and the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. And that's talking about the elect first and foremost, man. All Israel is not of Israel. In the book of Galatians, the 6th chapter, the 16th verse, it talks about the Israel of the Most High God, the Most High Power, the Most High Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. The ones that's been, that has been put, uh, given to him, his elect, his chosen, whom I hope to be a part of that number. All right? The ones that keep his truth, the gates is going to be opened unto you. As the Lord said to Ezra, paradise is opened unto you. Rest is allowed. Plentiness and perfect goodness Okay, this is what's appointed for us. The Lord doesn't have evil thoughts. All right. In the book of Thessalonians, the Lord doesn't have evil thoughts towards us. All right. Let me finish my statement. Okay. The Lord doesn't have evil thoughts towards us. In the book of Thessalonians, it says the Lord has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. That's our trust. That's our support. Things that were written aforetime was written for our learning. That we, through comfort and hope of the scripture uh, and faith of the scriptures, might have hope. Let's read that. I butchered it. And then, Lord willing, Spirit guides me to wherever I was just about to go. 
is the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay, so the things that were written aforetime, this book is all for us. All right? This is what's going to get us through these trying times to come. In the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 10th chapter, it says that uh, wisdom delivereth from pain. Let me grab that real quick. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10 and verse 9. It says, but wisdom delivered from pain. Those that attend upon her. This wisdom is what's going to get us through. The wisdom and knowledge and understanding shall be the stability. Our time is going to be our strength. All right. Being able to know the Lord. We read that in the book of. Um, that's ultimate wisdom. We read that in the book of Sirach. All right. Having the knowledge of his omnipotency. OK. Let's read that again. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 20. It says, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. All right. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. He's going to protect the ones that fear in him. It says, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. All right. Or, or his omnipotency. Okay. Knowing that he's in control of every situation. This is the book of Isaiah, back in Isaiah, chapter 26. And verse 2, it says, Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. The Lord has given us that truth. Now I remember where I was going through what Yahweh Shemi was shot in the book of Jeremiah. Okay? He didn't give us this truth for no reason. Okay? He gave us this truth because this is going to lead to a king. It leads to salvation. Okay? It leads to a kingdom. Wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Therefore, ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Uh, let's see, where is it at? This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, and verse 42. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. So we went through all the hell, and now we're, now we're living in the times of the Lord bringing good upon us. Okay, that's not the scripture I wanted, but it's a good precept. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um... Thoughts of good. I know it's in um, Jeremiah. Well, I believe it's in Jeremiah. Uh, yep, there's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord Yahweh, by Sham Yahweh Shai, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. All right, so the Lord is, he doesn't have, Lord willing, we have his elect. He cares for us, man. He, he, this is the, he shall no longer carry us away into captivity, as it says in the book of Lamentations. He will deliver us in six troubles, yea, and seven shall no evil touch thee. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord will fight for thee. Wait for wait ye upon the Lord, for his determination is to gather the nations, and to pour upon him his, indi his indignation. All right? The Lord is, well, let's continue on this Psalms, I mean on this Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, that will keep him in perfect peace. What did that Jeremiah say? He said, I have thoughts, uh, uh, my thoughts towards you is thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. All right. Thoughts towards who? When it says you, who is it talking about? It's talking about the Israelites that have this mind frame. Let's continue to read in Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and 3. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is leaning upon you, on thee, all right? Whose mind is going to you for help, for aid. Whose mind trusted in you for support, for a crutch, Right? Let's continue. Let's read it again. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So the Lord has thoughts of peace to the ones that trust in him, and not of evil. Okay? To give us an expected end, be, that expected end being salvation. Verse 4 Trust ye in the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai forever. For in the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is everlasting strength. All right? Can't lose with the Lord. We Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is everlasting strength. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Okay, so I have nothing else, you know, 
It's real late, but by the time I upload this, it'll probably be in the middle of the day, at least here in the Midwest. But um, I pray and I beg that that was edifying and uplifting and exhorting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, allows us to write the divide the word of truth, teach the word correctly and directly. honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom my keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Um, continue to lean upon Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and look to him as an aid, as a help, as a support, as a crutch, and nothing else. King David said, I will trust in thy name. I will not trust in my bow. All right? I will not trust in anything carnal. Some trust in chariots. All right? But we are going to trust in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. He is our helper. He is our salvation. We're going to cry to him in our time of need. And he's immediately going to take care of us. Okay? Salvation draw off night and redemption's near than we believe. Shalom.